All right, we're going to start by creating a new 2D scene and I'm just gonna call this animation. Now we're gonna add a couple node 2Ds under here. Character container, this child is going to be body and we'll do bones here. Now for this, we're going to be using the, the G-Bot that can be found on the GodotEngine.org tutorial that heavily inspired this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring those assets in. All right, and under body here, I'm going to select everything I've got except the complete and just bring it in. They're all going to come in as sprites. What we need to do now is arrange the images around a little bit so that it looks like an actual robot. Let me get started on that and fast forward through it. At this point, you may notice that some of the Z indexes are off. You can see the arm is behind the body here and behind the leg, this leg is in front. So to do to fix that, all we need to do is just rearrange a couple things in the sprites. All right, now we're ready to start on the bones. So we're gonna go into bones, we're going to add in skeleton 2D, and we're gonna add in a bone 2D. This is going to be our hip bone. So let's move it to about where the hip's gonna be, right there. And now we can start renaming and adding in, following through everything. So we're gonna do one side first and then fast forward through the rest of it. We need the hip, we need the leg, R, gonna be here, chin R, and foot R. And on the foot, we turn off auto calculate length and angle, make it a little bit easier to see because it's down there. These are all in line and we're gonna do the same thing with the arm and the head. So starting from the hip, gonna be our, our arm R and forearm R. Same thing with the last one, the forearm. I'm going to turn that off, set the angle so that it matches up. All right, so we have one side there, and then let's go ahead and do the, the head and jaw too. With the jaw, we're gonna take off the auto calculate. Here we are. All right, so now that we have all this, what we need to do is go back to our body and match up the pivot points here. We're gonna look primarily at the R's, select it up here is where we can change the pivot point. Move that pivot point to the bone joint that is right next to it. All right, now we're going to fast forward through the next section with reading the other side of the body. So I'll see you in a couple seconds. Okay, so now we have our fully down skeleton, but it doesn't really do anything yet. If we look just at the leg rotated a bit, sure it rotates, great, but nothing's happening. So what we need to do here is add some remote transforms. And to do that, under each of these, we're gonna add in another node, remote transform 2D. For each one, we're going to choose which what it's going to transform. So leg R, we're going to assign that to leg R. And R is there. Okay, so now we have all of our remote transforms, but you see these little warnings, bone lacks proper rest pose. So a rest pose is when we say reset, when we wanna go back to the way things started, then we go back to the rest pose, but one is not set yet. So we go skeleton 2D, overwrite rest pose, and all those go away. Now, if we make some changes here, let's say, for example, take the arm, rotate it. We don't like this, we go back here reset to rest pose, it'll go right back. Now, if you run into anything weird, like our, our foot here disappearing, let's check and see where it is. It's way over there. I want you to go back through to whichever image it is or whichever part of it, in this case, our foot L, and check the offset, that's where our problem is, but check that, check the transform, see if anything doesn't make sense. Now, when we add that back, it moves almost to where we wanted it to be. Let's reset our rest pose here, but you can see it's a little bit off, but we're gonna take that foot and we need to move the pivot point. We're gonna hide our right foot here. Go to our pivot point and we want it to be right about there. And when we move the foot, it should be in the right spot. There we go. So what we have now is called forward kinematics or FK. What that means is that we start from the top, in this case, we'll say our leg. And when we rotate, it'll rotate all the children below it. We can do that, this, but we can do that with all of the all of the limbs. That's not the goal here. What we want is inverse kinematics. We're gonna reset to the rest pose. And now what we need to do is add in a couple of things. We're gonna add in another node 2D. We're gonna call this one IK targets. Now under this IK targets, we're going to add a few more node 2Ds. We're going to do put R target and place that here. Put L target, place that here right on top of the pivot point. Arm R target go right at the tip of our arm here and arm L target to go at the tip of the other arm. Also do one more here head target. Put that right here at the head. Okay, now we have enough to get started on 
our inverse kinematics. So we're going to go to our skeleton. We're going to start by creating a modification stack, new skeleton modification stack 2D, and we're going to add in some modifications. The first one, we have several options here. I found that we're having constraints and making sure that our knees and arms don't bend in the wrong ways. I like this CCDIK. I'm going to start with the foot. The target node path is going to be our foot R target. The tip node path is going to be our foot R. Now the chain, this is going to be two. We're going to use our joint data. Assign shin R. Actually, we want that to be leg R. We're going from top to bottom and shin R is going to be our next one. Now, instead of going through everything here, now we should be able to go up, get enabled, go to our foot R target and there we go. Look, we're moving it around, but here's a problem. Look at that. The, the constraint it's bending in the wrong way, isn't it? But we need to go back to our skeleton 2D, enable constraint, and I'm going to zoom right in on this. Okay. Constraint angle, the spot within the semicircle or the arc is the direction that it will be able to to rotate just like that find find a sweet spot spot that works for you if for some reason say it gets stuck like this the section here is constraint angle inverse so it'll fit exactly where where you want it to we're going to do the same thing enable constraint on the knee and again if the angle doesn't quite fit then we can always change the inverse now let's go back to our foot target Oh, that's not quite right now, is it? Go back to our Skeleton 2D. Let's look at that and see what happened. Okay, I found it. It looks like it's a bug that I've run into before with inverse kinematics, but it's not difficult to get around. If you see something like this, uh, and I believe that we can recreate it here with the leg, use the target here, not quite right. So I'm gonna go back to Skeleton 2D, right to the leg. We're gonna check this auto calculate length and angle off and on. Now we can go back up here and edit our constraint angle so that it fits in with what we actually want. And we're going to do the same thing here. There we are. And now we have movement. So what inverse kinematics is compared to forward kinematics is we are inverting the way things are moved. The source, instead of being rotating from the top down, going from the bottom up, and this is saying where our, and with the constraints, choosing exactly how we want it to go. Now there's one more thing that we can do here, because look at this foot. This one is not exactly what we want it to be. So I'm gonna add under our foot, our target, another node 2D, foot look at. Now we'll go back to skeleton 2D. We're gonna add another constraint, or sorry, another modification for look at. The bone is going to be foot R. The node path is going to be foot look at. We're going to take that foot look at, and we're going to move it horizontal with the foot target. Now, because it's a child, it'll stay in place. And now, there we go. Now, if we need to do animations with this and move the foot, we go to the foot look at. We can move that wherever we want. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple seconds, fast forward through rigging out the rest of the model here. Okay, just to show that we've got that issue once again, we can fix it pretty easily with a leg L, chin L, we're just auto calculating, turning that off and on. Now the constraints are much easier to see. Another thing that's gonna make things a little bit easier is if we add a couple marker 2Ds in on the arms because they're shorter, we're gonna move those to the tip of the arm. Right, great. Finally, for the head, we're just going to do a look at. There we go. We have a fully rigged out robot. So let's get everything back into normal position. And we are just about set to start animating. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add in animation player. I create a new animation. Let's call it walk. Now we don't need to worry about scale we do want rotation though and we do want to keep position because of the way that we have the target set up or for the feet this here i'm going to hit the record button and what that's going to do is auto insert a keyframe So we'll add in 20 frames here. 
I'm gonna make it looping. Now we've got four targets here, or four tracks. So now I'm gonna skip up to 10, but that's at 30 FPS. We get a 30 frame cycle. Go to 0.5 here, which is gonna be halfway. Everything there, and head back like this. And we have a pretty simple walk. Now to clean it up, we can add in the other the parts that we need for it. Reset everything on the last frame here, however you wanna do it. But that about covers it for the basics of inverse kinematics and rigging up a 2D model. Please, if there's anything else that you'd like to see me cover, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you find this valuable. Also, I stream on Twitch very frequently, almost every day. Please check me out there, twitch.tv slash jddoesdev. Look forward to seeing you.